Okay guys, um, welcome to this next video, which I've done at spur of the moment. I'm off to London uh, to pick up a laptop, uh, which I need for a particular project. So it's a bit of a trek. It's 315 miles round trip today. Uh, and I just thought it'd be great to capture a video just to show what it's like to live with an EV on a trip that's gonna take most of the day uh, and is 315 miles in, in range. So it's gonna require a couple of stops at uh, superchargers, etc. So uh, last night I charged the car fully up. I had 70 miles range um, on the car after a day trip yesterday. So I put, um, what's that, 130, 155 miles on there. And I worked that out on the Octopus um, Agile tariff that had cost me two pounds 15 last night for to add that uh, 170 mile range, 150 mile range. So not too bad. Um, I've got some supercharger miles, so today we'll be doing a couple of stops at superchargers, which will be included. Um, some of the other things I wanted to quickly run through, um, yeah, uh, yeah, autopilot. I'll also cut in uh, a little bit of footage on autopilot uh, just to show you what that's like in the real world. There's been a lot of debate recently on forums about autopilot and about the fact that you know, some people say, and who've had the car, you know, it doesn't drive itself through the streets in the town. Well, it, I don't think it's really intended for that. I think really, and to be honest with you, as a user now for a good few months, um, I, I, I'm not sure I would want to use it anyway in those sort of circumstances yet. Um, but certainly for motorway, which we're going to do a lot of motorway driving today, um, it's really good. But you've also got, if you don't want the autopilot and auto steer, of course, you've also got assisted cruise control and we'll, we'll have a look at that as well. Yeah, so I'll show you a little demo of how I usually put um, a dress. I mean, I could just put it on there, but I don't know what the, uh, it's, uh, it's already, it shows you how it transfers from the phone to the car. Um, I actually did this last night, but I've reset it now just to show you that again. I find it probably the easiest way of setting your destination in sat nav. Um, but anyway, let's have a little look. Uh, there we go. That's where I'm off to. Um, and then so you've got, hopefully you can see this. So you've got it set in the sat nav um, and then you just scroll up on the card and you've got the share to button there, hit that and the Tesla app is there and that's now sending it to the car and there we go. So the address is sent to the car that way. Right, we're gonna arrive there with 5% battery, which Ain't great. So why hasn't that automatically worked out a um, a stop point? There are some limitations with this uh, sat nav. You know that's telling me to stay below seventy five to reach the destination, and it's going to allow me to. I'm going to arrive with five percent battery. Surely there's a way now of adding in a automatic now. Generates trip planner. Yeah, well, I've got that on. It should surely be telling me to. So I've actually used, this is a good point here. I mean, and it does, you know, you would have thought that it would, um, you know, maybe ask you if you're doing a return trip. And if you are, then it would, you know, automatically put some stops in. But there is also a very good app, and I hope you can see this. Um, and it's called ZapMap. And I've already done the trip in ZapMap as well. And um, so if I look at routes here, there it is. And it, it had recommended one stop on the way, and that is in Wokingham Superchargers, which I wanted to try because there's 16 superchargers there. So I'm just going to put that in, actually. That's a bit of a, a, bit of a letdown, really, on the uh, satellite navigation in the car. Okay, we are on the way. The couple of things I'd like to talk about today during this trip um, are certainly the supercharger system, and we'll experience that. I'll take the camera out and show you a little bit about that, uh, how we go about supercharging. Um, I should also add that if you buy a Tesla and you buy it through somebody's referral code, this is a plug for my referral code, um, but you can actually end up um, to get a thousand free supercharger miles yourself and also a thousand from the person whose um, referral code you used. So even if you don't use mine, and mine is in the description obviously, 
then do, if you are buying a Tesla, do make sure that you, you actually do um, get a referral code. It takes you to exactly the same website, it's exactly the same process. It just means you'll get a thousand free miles and so will the person who gives you the referral code. So, so all in all, that's a really good thing to do, regardless of who you do it, which referral code you use is a great thing to do. Okay, so the couple of things that I want to talk about, supercharger system first, I have had experience of it, we will look at it today, and to me it is the thing though that does separate um, Teslas from most other EVs. And, and I often, you know, I've seen reviews now about things like, you know, the new Volkswagen ID3, which looks really good. Um, and the price point's gonna be lower than the Tesla Model 3 entry level. Um, and I think, oh yeah, maybe, who knows, you know, and some of the other EVs that are around as well. Um, but then I think of not, ha even though I don't use the supercharger system very much, I think about not having that, and I, it does sort of fill me with a little bit of dread. I, I've no experience of using other charge points. That, I, should, I, I should add that, um, and that might be a very important part of that fear, is that I've not actually used it, and when you use it, it might be lovely. But all the things I hear about, things like, you know, everyone you've got to have a different bloody card for, um, you know, with the Tesla ones, even if you haven't got free supercharger miles, you just pull up, you just plug in, and you just go and have a cup of tea. It is nothing to do. It knows what car it is. It knows my account. That's already set up, and it'll just go ahead and charge the car. Um, and you know that is very convenient, very easy to use, and I think that's worth a lot. And we'll have a little look at that. I also want to have a little look at um, the cruise control on here, so assisted cruise control and also autopilot. Um, because there's been lots of debate around the fact that um, some some people are saying that autopilot isn't as good as they thought it was before they bought the car. You know, it doesn't take me through all the streets. I have to keep an eye out on things. I have to keep us aware. Well, I, I, I never saw it as that, I must admit. I never saw it as full auto driving. I mean, it's not. And we're a fair way off that, I would suggest. Um, and I've used it in A roads, and there's a clip on one of my earlier videos of that. And you know, it, I think it does pretty well for the technology that's involved to enable you to do that. I think it's pretty good. However, it is not full self-drive, and it is ideally suited for roads like the one we're just about to join, which is a dual carriageway, 70 miles an hour, and it does make the driving easier for this type of journey. Two, you can see on the screen. Um, that I'm able to use autopilot, you've got the grey symbol there, um, and so just two knocks down on the right hand stalk, engages autopilot, so now the car is steering itself, um, and it's set at 70, but because the vehicle in front is doing 64, we're staying at 64, I've set this car so it's seven car lengths from the vehicle in front. You can actually alter that if you want and make it closer. You can go to one car length behind, which terrifies me. But anyway, I've set this one on uh, seven car lengths to give a nice bit of distance. And I actually think for journeys like this, where you're on you know, miles and miles of dual carriageway, um, you know, I actually think this definitely makes the journey more enjoyable. Yes, you have to be aware. Yes, you've got to have your hands on the steering wheel. Um, but I'm not worried about, you know, the accelerator, the brake. I'm not worried about gears, obviously. Um, and I'm not too worried about the twists and turns in the road because the car will take care of those bends for you. Um, so it, that definitely makes a difference. Uh, the difference between autopilot and traffic aware cruise control, um, the difference is the auto steer bit, in basically. So to get traffic aware cruise control, you just tap down on the stalk once, and that means now that I can take my foot off the accelerator, um, but I'm still steering the car. Now, there's quite a lot of talk in forums about things like phantom braking, and I've experienced phantom braking. It is a real thing that in autopilot, um, you, you sometimes get this, you know, you might, you might be going under a bridge
damage or something, there's a shadow on the road, and the car for a second thinks it's another vehicle or thinks it's a hazard and aggressively brakes the car, you know, sets the brakes on. It's an emergency stop nearly. Um, and I've had that happen to me, so I know it's a real thing. I don't know whether that's just on full autopilot with auto steer or whether that's also applicable now on traffic aware cruise control. I'm assuming it will be because at the end of the day um, the car is still sensing its surroundings as you can see on the screen. Um, but this is also quite a relaxing way to drive the car, you know, you are steering but you haven't got to worry about the throttle and lots of cars have got traffic away cruise control. So a lot of you will be used to that. Um, but I think this is a you know very pleasant way to drive as well. So e either is good. Uh, I prefer autopilot if I'm honest, um, because it's quite nice not to have to worry too much about the steering, which sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? When you say it like that, just don't worry about the steering. It does sound ridiculous, but you know what I mean. You have got to still be aware. But it, it just takes you just rest your hands on the steering wheel, really. Um, so either of those, I think, are very good driving assist modes that help the journey go by. So I'm not going to bore you any longer. Um, I'm going to speed up, obviously, with the filming, and, um, and I'll see you probably now when we get to the first charge point, which is going to be in an hour and 51 minutes, 113 miles away at 11.02. We'll see you then. Okay, so, um, welcome back, um, here I am a little while later, it's now just approaching, well it's just gone 11 o'clock, I'm just a little while away from the supercharger, um, the trip's been reasonably uneventful, it's been quite, there's, there's like really thundery sort of downpour showers which I've gone through a couple. Um, of things that I and I'll show I'll demo this on the way back actually believe it or not I've had the car I mean I don't know how long now May June July or three four months I've discovered a slightly different way of using autopilot on dual carriageways which is which I'll explain on the way back but anyway I, I, probably everybody knows it I just the only person who but anyway um, yeah so it's been pretty eventful I'm, I've come off at this um, supercharger place which is the Wokingham one 16 superchargers 13 of which are available there they all are I can see them now, um, and I'm going to run through a little video on how to use these. I did have one phantom braking experience, um, which was unusual, and it looks like there's absolutely nothing here. Double Tree by Hilton, so I could go in the hotel and have a coffee, um, but it looks like there's nothing else here whatsoever. There are quite a few cars, however. Uh, Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm gonna go into one of these. Okay, it's as simple as this. There we go. Just press on the button on the top, port opens, and it goes. Okay, I've just plugged in. Hopefully you saw a little bit of it. Not sure how brilliant it was. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Gee, where's oh crike? Don't think I've ever had it as high as that. We're on 127 kilowatts, uh, which is 560 miles an hour. It's dropping now down to 116, 112, 113. So it's going up and down like a yo-yo, 110 now. Gone. But it doesn't appear to be any facilities here whatsoever. It says on the on the map. It says that there's um, uh, toilets, and I think they must be referring to the hotel. But I have no idea how far the hotel is to walk to. Okay, so a little update before I shoot off. Um, I've been here for about 22 minutes and um, we've put 106 miles onto the range of the car so i'm on 174 miles now which is more than enough to it's about 37 mile journey now uh, so even if i wanted to come back here i'd have plenty of uh, range for that so but i don't think i will come back here i actually think and by the way those people who do come to this which is the wokington or wokingham supercharger stations 16 of them 
Uh, when you get in here, you can actually, when you park up, there's a little car park sort of adjacent. You go through there and over a little wooden footbridge to get to the hotel itself, which is the Hilton Hotel. Um, I popped over there just to use the toilet, but um, you could probably get a bite to eat there, no problem at all. So uh, very nice over there. So um, so yeah, but I probably won't stop you on the way back. I'll probably see if I can get maybe to memory services and I'll catch up with you then. Okay, I've just picked up um, the laptop. Everything's really cool with that. It looks amazing, so I'm very happy. Um, heading back now home. Um, and if I switch to the other camera, you can see that uh, I'm currently on 123 miles uh, range. And um, by the way, one other little tip off your own uh, navigation, and rather than type in home, if you just swipe to the direction of the arrow, um, it'll actually take you straight home anyway from wherever you are. So there we are. So. Okay, here we go. So 151 miles is my return journey, 3 hours and 12 minutes. Uh, it's saying that I should stop at Membry, which funny enough was the one I was going to stop at anyway. And it looks like we need to do a 20 second charge there uh, and I'll get home with 18% in the battery, um, which would be fantastic. So um, that looks all pretty good. Okay guys, on the last leg of my little journey, um, just got into memory services, just been out and uh, used the facilities. Got a little uh, well, sandwichy, well, it was a salad actually. I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> Bit too much detail. Anyway, sat outside because the sun's out at long last and uh, enjoyed that. 27 minutes, 142 miles added to the Tesla. So just leaving memory services. So a couple of things that um, this trip has highlighted to me, and one is, um, I know Elon watches my channel all the time. Stay straight um, to take the M4 yeah, Let me turn that down, I think. Yeah, um, if Elon is watching, the sat-nav, it, it's starting to become a little bit irritating. Now stay straight to I, take But not irritating, because I love the car, but, it just doesn't feel to me like it's the sort of sat nav we should have in you know what is an incredible car and a couple of simple changes in my eyes i'm sure it's much more complicated but a couple of simple changes would make all the difference to the sat nav earlier on in this video you'll have seen that when i left home and set off um, I actually put in the destination that I went to in London and it, it, it was fine, it said yeah it's fine, you can go, off you go and you're going to get there with 5% battery left but you can't travel over 75 miles an hour, not that I do I should add. But to me that just is a bit mad that it didn't even offer me the option to stop at a supercharger on that trip. And it didn't offer me the option to say, actually, it's a return trip. Because if I was able to do that, then I'm sure the sat nav would have said, well, you need to do a stop on the way there and a stop on the way back. So even if I was able to, and this, this baffles me, but I can't add way, waypoints to the sat nav in the Tesla. So if I could have done that, maybe I could have, you know, just put the destination as a waypoint on a, a trip from my house to my house or so, I don't know. But really what it should do is what the, the um, Zap, what they call it, the, the, the other app, you know, that, um, which I've had to use really to plan where to stop on the way out. Um, so it, it's just annoying really. A couple of other little things that I've noticed on this trip with the sat nav as well. At one point on the A329, I haven't captured it on camera, which is a shame. I was on the A329, which takes me to the M4 to go home to South Wales. And it told me to come off the mo the it was a dual carriageway stroke motorway. It's a dual carriageway. It asked me to come off down to the roundabout underneath the motorway and back up the other side, back onto the road I was already on. And I, like a fool, followed it because I thought, oh, I must be taking me off somewhere else to do a shortcut. You know, it's obviously, it's, you know, it's not that, it's clever, you know, we've got to follow it. And so it ended up just taking me off the motorway and then put me back on the same motorway. 
crazy. And then one thing I did capture on camera, although it's still on my iPhone, was I was coming up a slip road off a motorway, coming up to the roundabout, and the diagram, I'm in the UK by the way, and in the UK we approach a roundabout and we go left around the roundabout. Uh, I was taking the first, first exit off left, but yet the diagram showed me going right around the roundabout and taking the third exit off. Uh, I managed to get a still of that, so I'll put it up on screen now. Crazy. And those couple of little things just make me think, oh, you know, they need to allocate somebody in Tesla HQ to work on the sat-nav because it's such a shame. I want to use the sat-nav in here all the time because, you know, it's awesome. It looks incredible. It's, a, it's the heart of the car. Um, and, you know, to not be able to use it on a, on a trip like today, I shouldn't have to use any other app. I shouldn't have to go to that Zap, whatever it's called, and use that to find out which chargers to use. I should just be able to use this. Um, and it shouldn't be doing things like showing you a diagram to go the wrong way around a roundabout. It shouldn't be taking you off a dual carriageway down to a roundabout and back up the other side, back onto the same dual carriageway. Um, and it, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm moaning. I, you know, I'm not a moany type of person. Um, but it just, it, just a few little frustrations, really, that to me seem to be things they should be getting, getting right, really. Uh, and now and again, and I did put a post on a forum about this a little while ago, you very often approach a roundabout and it'll say, take the second exit, but actually the diagram is showing you the first exit, and it is, in fact, the first exit you should be taking, but the voice says, take the second exit. And to me, these are little things that just, um, that, you know, just need, should, should, should be fixed. Um, but there we are. I've, I'm stepping off my soapbox because um, that wasn't the purpose of this video. The purpose of the video was to say, you know, what it's like living with an EV on a day when you've got to drive to London and back 315 miles in a day. And I've got to say, it's a, it's a doddle. Um, you know, it really is. It's a pleasure. I really enjoy it. It makes you stop now and again to take a break, which, let's face it, you should anyway. Um, and, it, and it really is not, it's a non-issue. It's a non-issue to have an EV on a trip, or certainly to have a Tesla on a trip like today. Okay, um, I had to stop the video in then because it was we were down into a 50. Um, I actually quite like the way that the Tesla deals with this bit. Um, you're in a 50, you can set the autopilot down to 50, um, and you'll pretty much just stay in this lane, although that vehicle's hanging over a little bit, so I'll just go past him a little bit manually. And it'll just keep pace now with the car in front. Or it'll do 50, whichever is the, uh, the fastest. Um, but it takes care of the steering, so and it also means that you, you, know, you know you're not going to crash into the car in front. You're going to stick doing 50 the whole time, uh, which is quite nice. So it makes this type of driving very pleasant indeed. So the ways that I could overtake him, one would be to break the auto steer, which would disengage it. Um, but I'm not going to do that. That's, that's a very stupid way to do it. I have done it that way when I first had the car because I didn't know any different. Um, the way that I've always done it actually is to, and I'm going to do that right now, is to use the right stalk on a UK car, um, push that up to disengage autopilot, and then indicate and go into the next lane. And then if I wanted to, I could put autopilot back on by hitting the stalk, the right stalk two times. And that's the way that I've always sort of done it, really. So this third way, so rather than breaking the auto steer, or rather than moving the stalk up once to disengage autopilot and disengage traffic aware cruise control, then manoeuvre and then switch it all back on afterwards, the other way is to actually indicate, which seems to remove auto steer, and then allows you to move out but still have traffic aware cruise control 
so the car will let accelerate um, to whatever you've set it at and then to you know you can carry on steering then if you want or you could re-engage autopilot or carry on steering until you're ready to pull back in pull back in once you've indicated and then re-engage autopilot and that seems like a bit of a smoother way the only thing is and maybe somebody can give me a clue in the comments it doesn't seem to be every single time um, so hopefully I might be able to demonstrate that to you now in a second okay so we're on 75 we're approaching this lorry and what I'm going to do rather than and brake, I'm going to indicate, which it didn't work again, I don't know why. So I thought I had discovered something unique. Now I may have stumbled on it and I'm not doing it right for some reason, but I could have sworn that there were the occasions today driving up where if I indicated to overtake, I wouldn't have to brake the auto steer to be able to do that maneuver. It was allowing me to do it. Um, maybe it has to sense that you're on the steering wheel. Maybe that's it. So, you know, I'm now sort of giving a sense that I'm actually on the steering wheel. I'm going to take it up to 75. Um, so it knows that I'm actually on the steering wheel. This could be it. And then, as I come up to this car now, you know, I'm giving a bit of force to the steering wheel so it knows I'm there. Uh, I indicate, ah, and it flashed. I don't really notice that, but it flashed and disengaged smoothly without that sort of oomph of braking it to allow me to manoeuvre and maintain the speed on the traffic aware cruise control. This could be it. It has to know that you're on the steering wheel to do this, I think. So, getting a bit excited now, I'm going to have a little play with this. Few cars to overtake, 
which I'll do. So I'm either going to go up to 70 or stay the same distance to the car in front. I'm undertaking people in the fast lane, but what can I do? Now I'm going to go back into the slow lane. So I apply the indicate, it takes auto steer off. So there we are. Now, apologies if everybody else who <laughs> subscribes to me has got a Tesla already knows about that. Uh, but up until today, I did not know that. And it does appear to be a, you know, a slightly less, well, it's one less function. It's not a lot in a third, first world issue, I know, but um, it's just something I, you know, just picked up today. Didn't really understand how it was working, but definitely understand now. So there we are. So hopefully you've enjoyed this little video and you've enjoyed this little trip with me from South Wales to London and back in a day. Um, if you have, then please do like the video if you have liked the video. Please do subscribe. Hit the little blue icon, bell icon, so that you'll get notified of any future videos. And um, thank you once again for watching and hope to catch up with you very soon.